Hi volunteers, in this training video I want to spend some time talking with you about something that is a core value across all of our ministries here at Orchard Hill Church, and that value is gospel-centeredness. Gospel-centeredness is one of those things that sounds vague and religious, I know, but what I want to show you is that it's actually a very big deal and makes a significant difference in the way that we talk to children, students, and parents. The idea in gospel-centeredness is that the good news of Jesus' life, death, and resurrection in our place for our sins is the core, the foundation, the very center, the heart of Christianity. Now on many different occasions you and I are tasked with taking a passage of scripture and applying it to somebody else's life, whether we're in a conversation, whether we're teaching, or whether we're leading a small group. And oftentimes those passages that we're dealing with have to do with some sort of moral concept. Do do this, don't do that, be a good person. And what we always have to remember, what, what the value of gospel-centeredness teaches us is that number one, the gospel always precedes moral behavior. The gospel is always the starting point. It is always what comes first. And number two is that the gospel always addresses the root problem. Here's what I mean. If a new person shows up at Orchard Hill and they hear us talking about lying, lying is wrong, here's why lying is bad for you, here are a few ways that you can teach yourself to stop lying. They are going to walk away believing that in order to become one of us, they need to stop lying. But that couldn't be further from the truth. The message of Christianity is that we're all broken, sinful people, and all people are welcome, and it's after we meet Jesus that we start to see those parts of our life begin to change. If we were to take the conversations that we're having with children, youth, adults, and pluck it up and place it in a Muslim mosque or a Jewish synagogue, and if those conversations would make perfect sense in that context, then we're having the wrong conversation. We're not being faithful to the core of Christianity because Christianity is all about Jesus Christ having a relationship with him and out, how out of that relationship with him we begin to see life change happen. Now, this concept is really difficult, especially because you often have to do it on the fly without any preparation at all. So I wanna give you an acronym, and it's weird, but that's okay. The acronym is SAP, yes the sticky stuff that's in a tree that you get on your hands. But here's the deal. This concept is so sticky that if you can just get it into your mind, it will literally be so obvious to you every time you pick up a Christian book, every time you turn on a Christian radio station, every time you visit a church, because you're gonna have a very clear picture about whether or not what you are reading or hearing is gospel-centered or whether it is moral-centered. So in the SAP acronym, the S stands for sin source. We always want to ask, what is the actual source of this sin? What is the root? Where does this sin actually come from? Because nine times out of ten, we're not actually talking about bullying, right? We're talking about an insecurity that is so deep inside somebody's heart that they feel like they need to promote themselves at somebody else's expense. Now, how does the gospel apply to the source of that sin. The A in SAP stands for always struggle. You know, for the rest of our lives, we are gonna struggle with bullying. We might not use that word, but we will always struggle with wanting to promote ourselves at the expense of someone else. We will never, ever get this perfect. But thank God that we have Jesus Christ who offers us forgiveness, even though we always struggle with this. The P in SAP stands for perfect Jesus. See, even though you and I will never get this perfect, Jesus was the only one who ever got it perfect, and he did it perfectly in our place. He was our substitute. He lived the perfect life, and he died the perfect death that you and I could never do. I hope that you can see how unbelievable the gospel really is. God doesn't demand that we get our life in order before coming to him. He invites us to come just as we are, and then we start to see our life begin to change. Jesus lived the perfect life that you and I could never live. Hey, before you walk away from this video, I want you to spend a few minutes thinking about this acronym SAP and how it applies to the subject of lying or dishonesty. Think about how you would explain that to somebody else. How would you have that conversation? Remember the acronym, Sin Source, Always Struggle, and Perfect Jesus. The next time we're together as volunteers, we'll spend some time sharing our answers and discussing this very subject.